BGMC. The biblical truth lives here. Welcome to the City Gate Messianic Bible Study, being brought to you by Beth Going Messianic Congregation. What is the importance of the biblical city gate? It was a place contracts were made that are binding forever. The city gate was also a place of redemption for the kinsman redeemer. The city gate was a place where chastisement was administered. So come join us now as we enter into the City Gate Messianic Bible Study. Let's go get a blessing. Turn to Yirmiyahu, Jeremiah chapter 6. This is the City Gate Messianic Bible Study being brought to you by Beth Goyim, a place where Jew and Gentile worship Yeshua and the Messiah as one people. We're going to be studying uh, Jeremiah chapter 6, and uh, we're going to start off with a reading of uh, chapter 6. So let's go to that, and then we'll start in our study. Jeremiah chapter 6. Head for cover, people of Benjamin. Get out of Jerusalem. Blow the shofar in Tekoa. Light the beacon on Beit Hakarim. For disaster threatens from the north with great destruction. Although she is beautiful and delicate, I am cutting off the daughter of Zion. Shepherds advance on her with their flocks. All around her they pitch their tents, each gazing his own plot of pasture. Prepare for war against her. Get up. Let's attack at noon. Woe to us, for the day is waning Evening shadows are lengthening. Get up. Let's attack at night. Let's destroy her palaces. For Jehovah Sivaot says, Cut down her trees and raise a siege ramp against Jerusalem. This is a city to be punished. In her, there is nothing but oppression. Just as a cistern keeps its water fresh, so she keeps her wickedness fresh. Violence and destruction are heard within her. Always before me sickness and wounds. Accept correction, Yerushalayim, or I will be estranged from you and turn you into a desolate waste, a land without inhabitants. Thus said Jehovah Sivo, they will glean the remnant of Israel and thoroughly, as in a vineyard, one last time, like grape pickers, pass through your land over the vines. To whom should I speak? Whom should I warn? Who will listen to me? Their ears are dull. They can't pay attention. For them the word of Jehovah has become unattractive, an object of scorn. This is why I am full of Jehovah's fury. I am weary of holding it back. Pour it out on the children in the street and on the groups of young men gathered. For husbands and wives will be taken together, seniors as well as the very old. Their homes will be turned over to others. Their fields together with their wives. Yes, I will stretch out my hand against those who are living in the land, says Jehovah. For from the least of least to the greatest of them, all are greedy for gains. Prophet and Kohanim alike, they, are all, they all practice fraud. They dress the wound of my people, but only superficially saying, there is perfect shalom when there is no shalom. They should be ashamed of their detestable deeds, but they are not ashamed at all. They don't know how to blush. Therefore, when others fall, they too will fall. When I punish them, they will stumble, says Jehovah. 
Here's what Jehovah says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask about the ancient paths. Which one is the good way? Take it and you will find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not take it. I appointed sentinels to direct them. Listen for the sound of the shofar, but they said, we will not listen. So hear, you nations, know, you assembly, what there is against them. Hear, O earth, I'm going to bring disaster on this people. It is a consequence of their own way of thinking. For they pay no attention to my words. As, and as, for, as for my Torah, they reject it. What do I care about incense from Shiva? Or sweet cane from a distant land? Your burnt offerings are unacceptable. Your sacrifices don't please me. Therefore, says Jehovah, I will put obstacles in the way of this people that they will stumble over. Fathers and sons, neighbors and friends, all will perish together. Here's what Jehovah says. A people is coming from the land of the north. A great nation will be aroused from the ends of the earth. They will take hold of bow and spear. They are cruel. They have no compassion. Their noise as they ride on horses is like a roaring sea. And they are equipped for battle against you, daughter of Zion. We have heard the news. Our hands fall limp. Anguish has seized us. Pain like a mother in childbirth. Don't go into the countryside. Don't walk on the road. For the sword of the enemy is spreading terror in every direction. Daughter of my people, put on sackcloth. Roll in ashes. Mourn as if for an only son. Wail most bitterly. For suddenly the destroyer will come upon us. I have made you a refiner and tester of my people, to know and test how they believe. All them are total rebels, spreading slanderous gossip. They are bronze and iron, inferior metals, all them corrupt. The bellows blasts away, and though the lead is consumed by the fire, in vain has a, has a smelter refined for the wicked have not been separated. They are called rejected silver because Jehovah has rejected them. Okay, so let's go back now and look at this chapter. Okay. So in chapter 6 here, well, one, there's 30 verses to go through as we just read. Uh, this is Yirmiyahu's second message. It's continued. The terrors that should come because of sin. Israel is in great sin at this point. Yeah, we just read also. And they're, they're, not, uh, they're not turning. So... The Father, Jehovah, is going to turn up the heat on them because he tried to get their attention. He worked, uh, you know, he gave us many chances and he just did not, uh, we, we just did not turn. So the summary of this chap chapter is Yirmiyahu's final warning of the impending siege. Uh, divine warnings and Jehovah's unheeding call. Okay, we're going to look at parts where he kept calling us, but we we didn't want to have anything to do with him, and that's the way the world is, uh, sadly today. And we don't we don't study history, and those that don't study history are doomed to repeat, uh, and most of that is bad. Okay, the chapter concludes on a somber note. 
reminding us of the devastation that can follow when we persistently reject Jehovah's call. Jehovah the Father is he's going to call more than once because he he cares greatly about each and every one of us. Okay, that's why he sent his son, our Messiah Yeshua, to guide us, to give us an example, to show us the way, and to ultimately pay our debt if we turn from sin and follow him, Yeshua, our Messiah, in spirit and in truth. Okay, so Jehovah uh, calls us, and in this chapter we're going to see that we don't uh, we don't listen to his call. Okay. Uh, what we see here is he, he wants um, uh, authentic repentance. Okay. You know, some people, uh, if you ever, if you're a parent, and you, if you have more than one child, or even if you're, you're a parent and uh, you... Uh, you allow your child to play with others, and inevitably there's going to be some argument. And uh, your child or the other child does something wrong, and you, you correct that situation. And you tell your child, or the, or the other child comes to your child and says, he's sorry. But the child doesn't mean it. He says, I'm sorry, you know. That's the way we're going to see Israel in the book of Yirmiyahu, in the book of Jeremiah. And that's the, the they don't repent. And so we, we, we need authentic righteousness. And that comes first by repenting. Okay. And in the eyes of Jehovah, we don't do that. So he's going to have to bring on more chastisement because we will not yield to God, and it's the same uh, the way the world is today, right? So, now we move on to the next slide. Uh, there's three key verses in those, uh, I think it was 30 verses that we read, 30 verses there are three key verses. So, look at uh, Jeremiah 6, verse number 8. Jeremiah 6, verse number 8. That says, uh, Accept correction, Jerusalem, or I will be estranged from you and turn you into a desolate waste, a land without inhabitants. Now, that's pretty powerful. And uh, you would think that the the people would would turn, but they don't. Okay, uh, you would think that they would accept correction because of what has happened so far. Uh, the tribes to the north are gone, and uh, you would think they would say accept correction, but they don't. Okay, uh, then we're going to look closely at the word estranged. Sorry about that. Okay, uh, we're going to look at the word "estranged" in a, in a in a bit. Okay, because it's, it's a very powerful word in Hebrew, and uh, we need to know what that word means in its full context of the definitions. Okay, uh, Jehovah says, if we don't turn in verse number eight, uh, we're going to turn into a desolate waste. Okay. You would think that the people, you would think that the people would believe him when he says these things. And that's the, the greatest sadness of people then and to this day. People do not believe the words of God. They don't uh, even, you know, they can't, what it is is they can't put two and two together. Uh, 
that's really what you see it is they they don't they don't see it that Yehovah you know when bad things are going on in their lives they don't see that Yehovah is trying to get their attention what they 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 think it's uh, random uh, things and it is not so it is very important for us to look at that now go down to verse number 14 because there are three key verses in this chapter verse 14 they dress the wound of my people but only fish superficially saying peace peace but there is no peace okay it says in the cjb in it there is perfect shalom when there is no shalom that doesn't read the way it reads good but it i like the lady the other one in the, the the nasb says peace peace but there is no peace so they dress the wound that means you're injured okay how did you get the injury <laughs> excuse me a second okay so that's something to look at how did you get the wound was it something that Jehovah <coughs> Jehovah did uh, for you oh, one second here Okay, that was fun. All right. So, what well, is something that uh, was done? So, then the people are going to say, we want peace, and there is no peace. If you've been looking at uh, Israel, let's say over the last six months or the last year, you know, people have been saying they want peace with Israel. Now, that's not going to be available at all. So Jeremiah 6.14 is something that we need to uh, fully understand. And then finally, uh, the, other, the, the third key verse for chapter 6. Is verse 16. Here's what Jehovah says. Stand at the crossroads and look, ask about the ancient paths. Which one is the good way? Take it and you will find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not take it. This is one of the, the, one of the saddest verses in all the Bible. It is sad because the arrogance of people to tell the Lord no is amazing. You know, he said, stand at the crossroads, look at the ancient paths. You know, ask about the ancient paths. He's saying, ask, and I'll tell you. And ask which one's a good one. He said, I'll even tell you which is a good one. And he says, you'll find rest for your souls. But the people say, nah, we like having problems. Okay, so this is amazing how, how stiff-necked we are back then and to this day. And what's coming our way, you know, our Messiah Yeshua said in Matthew 24, and there's a lot of people quoting this uh, recently, you know, had the time not been cut short, nobody would survive. So this is bad. But what we're going to go through soon is even worse. And, you know, because... The people today refuse to look at the ancient crossroads. They they look at they refuse to look at the ancient paths. Uh, they they stand at the crossroads, 
and they don't want to take the the Torah path. It's quite sad. Okay, now let's move on to the next part here. Uh, as you see up here, uh, key verses are 8, 14, and 16. Now, I've broken down chapter 6 into eight sections, okay? It, it's important to, to understand the sections of the chapter to, to put things together in a more cohesive manner. Okay, so section one is really just, it's just really verse one. Head for cover, people of Benjamin. Benjamin, Benjamin, okay. We're going to get to that in a moment. Section number two is verse two through five. I am cutting off the daughter of Zeal, okay. And he says head for cover, but she doesn't head for cover. Then we got one of our key verses here in section number three, which is verse six through nine. And that is a, is a section that says, Accept correction, Yerushalayim, or I will be estranged from you and turn you into a desolate waste, a land without inhabitants. Okay, that's, uh, that's going to be a pretty powerful section uh, that we're going to get to tonight. Okay, then uh, section number four is verse 10 through 15, which is, encompasses another one of our key verses, which is peace, peace, but there is no peace. Now, section number five also has another key verse. And that is verse uh, 16. Section number 5 is uh, two verses. It's verse 16 and 17. And that part is uh, stand at the crossroads. Okay, standing at the crossroads. Okay. And section number 6 is verse 18 through 21 is a consequence of their own way of thinking. You know, that that's a, a big one for all of us to understand, you know, because only one second here. Okay. In section number seven is verse 22 to 25, a people is coming from the land of the north. And finally, section number eight of chapter six is verse 26 through 30. They are called rejected, rejected silver. Okay. Uh, that's uh, when you're being rejected by the Lord, you've been, uh, he's made you, he's tried to make you pure, but you don't like it. You don't want it. So if you're something that's rejected, that's not going to be good for you. Okay, so let's go back to verse number one uh, of chapter six. Head for cover, people of Benjamin. Get out of Yerushalayim. Blow the shofar in Tekoa. Light the beacon on Beit HaKarim, for disaster threatens from the north with great destruction. Okay, so the first uh, part we look at here is let's let's uh, look at the definition for the word disaster. Okay, let's look at the word uh, the definition for the word disaster. Disaster in some of your translations you might have the word evil. It's H seven four five one. Ra definition number one. Bad. Or evil, okay, okay. So that's a that's a pretty simple understanding. Number two, bad, disagreeable, malignant, okay. So disagreeable, okay. So he says for disaster threatens from the north, great destruction, something that's going to be disagreeable 
to your lives is uh, something he's bringing. Now, definition number three, bad, unpleasant, evil, giving pain, unhappiness, misery. So when we read uh, that second sentence in verse number one, for disaster threatens from the north with great pain, unhappiness, and misery. So you would think that the people would would take this warning because they've already realized that the, the ten tribes in the north have been taken away into captivity. So Jehovah is saying, you know, head for cover. Get out of Jerusalem. Okay. Warn the people with the shofar and Tekoa. Light the beacon in Beit HaKarim. Okay. Because what's coming is going to give you pain. Going to bring unhappiness. And it's going to bring misery. You would think, you know, people would pay attention. But they don't, because these are also the warning signs that are going on in the world today. What's coming is going to bring pain, unhappiness, and misery to literally billions of people. Okay, so the, the beautiful part about verse 1 is we see at the top here, Jehovah does nothing in secret. He's telling you, get out of that area. A hurting is coming. But you want to stay? Don't blame me, he says. You know, It's he that's going to be bringing it. But that's mercy. If he's saying, get out, and you don't, who do you have to blame but yourself? Okay. He's given a warning because by his Torah, by Elohim's Torah, he has to give us an opportunity. It's by his law, and he wrote the law, so he's going to live by the law. So without he's not going to bring disaster without first giving us an opportunity to turn from our wicked ways, to hear his warning, to repent, and to do what he asks you to do. So he says, head for cover, Benjamin, people of Benjamin, get out of Jerusalem, get out of Jerusalem, blow the shofar in Tekoa, okay? So that's a warning signal because we know from Ezekiel 3 and chapter 33, that the people are supposed to listen to the sounding of the shofar, and it's a warning. Okay, uh, light the beacon on Beit Hakarim. So you see this uh, this lighting the beacon. So if anybody has watched Lord of the Rings, you saw the the beacons being lit, and then everybody got ready for war. Okay, so that was a, a biblical principle that Tolkien put into his move into his books okay so now we're going on to section number two verse two through five hello she is beautiful and delicate i am cutting off the daughter of zion shepherds advance on her with their flocks all around her they pitch their tents each grazing his own plot of pasture Prepare for war against her. Get up. Let's attack at noon. Woe to us, for the day is waning. Evening shadows are lengthening. Get up. Let's attack at, at night. Let's destroy her palaces. Okay? So, we need to look at this because when we get to, you know, looking at the ancient paths, and God saying, choose the ancient paths. He, he warns us before that. Okay. So we see in, the, in the, those verses there. 
even though in verse 2, Jehovah says, Zion, Zion, is beautiful and delicate, she's acting like a prostitute. And I'm not going to take it any longer. Okay, so she's delicate, but there's only so much that Jehovah's going to allow. And he's, he says, I'm in, in, uh, in the latter part of verse number two, two, I'm cutting off the door to Zion. Okay. Uh, then he says in verse three, shepherds advance on her with their flocks. Okay. This is shepherds of armies. Okay. Armies are coming. He's bringing armies because we, we know that uh, when we read the, the rest of the, the book of Jeremiah, that he's bringing armies. Okay. They're going to pitch their tents all around, all around the city. So, but he warned in verse number one, get out. Now he's bringing the shepherds advancing her with their flocks. They're, so these, these are military. Okay. They're going to surround Yerushalayim. They're going to advance on, on her with their flocks, meaning their military. Uh, in verse number three, they, they pitched their tents all around the city. What's out there? Oh, that's the farmland because the city, you know, usually doesn't have a lot of farmland in it. So the farmland will be outside the city. So the shepherds uh, are letting their flocks eat the food that would be for the people in the city. Okay. Uh, in verse number four, he says, prepare for war against her. Now, in verse number four, this is uh, pretty brazen for an army. To attack at noon means you're confident. You know that your, your uh, opponent is weak. Because most of the time when an army wants to attack, they want the element of surprise. But if it's at noon, there is no element of surprise. They see you coming. Okay. So let's attack it at night. Woe to us for the day is coming. Okay. Evening shadows are lengthening. Okay. When those evening, evening shadows come, that's death is coming. Okay. That's what, you know, he's saying there that, Evening shadows are lengthening. The darkness is coming. And in verse number five, get up, let's attack at night. Let's destroy her palaces. All right, so he's allowing this disaster to come. He's allowing this disaster because the people would not repent. And uh, that's not something that he uh, he liked very much, so he's he's, but he warned. He warned in in the previous chapters. He warned, uh, you know, in the, verse number one here. Get out, head for cover. I'm bringing I'm bringing the hurting. All right, so now we're going to move on to the Brit Hadashah bridge with those verses okay so in verse number two through five let's read it once again then we'll go to the bridge how this ties in together with the the British of the new testament although she is beautiful and delicate i am cutting off the daughter of zion shepherds advance on her with their flocks all around her they pitched their tents each grazing his own plot of pasture prepare for war against her Get up, let's attack at noon. Woe to us, for they, the day is coming, evening shadows are lengthening. Get up, let's uh, attack at night. Okay, so let's see how this ties together with the Brit Hadashah. And uh, hold your place in Jeremiah, in Yirmiyahu 6, but go to Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. Okay, also, if, uh, if you missed any part of this study, go to our website, bgmctv.org that's 
bgmctv.org. Or you can go to bethgoim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. And this is part number 21. Okay. And you can see the previous parts. You can download it. Uh, hit the like if you're watching us on Rumble or YouTube. Uh, subscribe to our pages. And so that you get notified when uh, when we put a new uh, video up. And uh, if you want the PowerPoint, it's up over 350 slides. Send an email to info at bethcoim.org. That's info at bethcoim.org. Okay, so we're tying together... Uh, what we read in in chapter six with the with the the British on the New Testament. So we're in Luke nineteen verse forty one to forty four. When Yeshua had come closer and could see the city, he wept over it, saying, "If you only knew today what is needed for shalom, but for now it is hidden from you from your sight. For the days are coming of." Upon you when your enemies will set up a barricade around you and circle you, hem you in on every side, and dash you to the ground, you and your children within your walls, leaving not one stone standing on another, and all because you did not recognize your opportunity when God offered it. Okay? So this is very powerful what our Messiah is saying, that you're hemmed in on every side and you did not recognize when Jehovah gave us an opportunity. Hmm, that's like Jeremiah 6. He surrounds us and in 6.1, he gave us an opportunity to choose rightly. So in Luke 19, you know, Yeshua's weeping over uh, Jerusalem. And uh, he says in verse 43, you're going to be hemmed in on every side. And all because you didn't recognize your opportunity when God offered it. That's pretty powerful. Because Jehovah always offers an opportunity. And it's sad what's going on in the world today because we are heading for the same disaster. And if you read Matthew 24, you see what's on its way. And we're going to be, Israel's going to be hemmed in on every side, which, there, I mean, more and more countries, uh, bigger countries are lining up against Israel. you got Lebanon, Syria. Okay. So Israel would probably hold their own against them. But then you got Russia, Turkey, China, Iran. Okay. They're going to be Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Psalm 83. But, you know, we are, we are warned. Okay. Let's now go back to Jeremiah 6. Okay, we're now going to look at section number three. Section number three, accept correction, okay? Or, if you don't, I'll be estranged from you. Let's look at Jeremiah 6, verse 6 through 8. For Jehovah Sivod says this, Cut down her trees, and raise a siege ramp against Jerusalem. This is a city to be punished. In her were, in her there is nothing but oppression. Just as a cistern keeps its water fresh, so she keeps her wickedness fresh. Violence and destruction are heard within her. Always before me, sickness and wounds. Accept correction, Jerusalem, or I will be estranged from you and turn you into a desolate waste, a land without inhabitants. Thus says Jehovah Sivot, they will glean the remnant of Israel as thoroughly as 
in a vineyard one last time. Like a grape picker passes your hand over the vines. Okay, so we got two main sections of these verses that we, we read. The first section is uh, about cutting down the trees. Okay, Jehovah rarely says cut down the trees. But when a tree is not bearing fruit, he says then in Torah, and we'll go to that in a moment, he says there in the Torah that that tree can be cut down. Because uh, to get a, a, a big apple tree or a, a big fruit tree, where the, it, it, it's got to grow for a, a considerable amount of time. And he's saying in verse 6, in Jeremiah 6, verse 6, Jehovah Sivod says, cut down her trees. And then he talks about in the in the section number three, that, you know, we keep our our sin fresh. That means we're constantly doing it. Verse seven, just as a cistern keeps its water fresh, so she keeps her wickedness fresh. Okay, that means you're, you're constantly doing it. You don't care about what Jehovah says. You don't care about what his word says. You're you just want to do it, and you're gonna. Your flesh is is ruling your spirit. So Yehovah says these people aren't giving me any fruit. Cut down these trees, okay? Cut down these trees. Uh, they're wicked, and they refuse to accept correction, okay? So let's go take a look what it says around the trees. Hold your place there in Jer Jeremiah six. And turn to Divarim, Deuteronomy 20, verse 19 and 20. Divarim, Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 19 and 20. When in making war against a town in order to capture it, you lay siege to it for a long time, you are not to destroy its trees, cutting them down with an axe. You can eat their fruit, so don't cut them down. After all, are the trees in the field human beings, so that you have to besiege them too? However, if you know that certain trees provide no food, you may destroy them and cut them down in order to build siege works against the, against the town, making war with you until it fails. Okay, so that's we need that understanding because in Jeremiah 6.6, 6, he's saying cut down the trees. So the trees are, you know, they're not harming us, okay? As it says in, in verse 19 of Deuteronomy there, after all, are the trees in the field human beings so that you have to besiege them too? But in Jeremiah 6, 6, he's saying, cut down the trees. Okay, so in verse 20, Deuteronomy 20, 20, uh, these trees are not providing any food so we can destroy them to make the siege works against Jerusalem. Okay, so that's, that's something very important for us to, to understand that the people were not bearing fruit. So Jehovah says, cut them down. Get rid of them. Okay. So when you go so now let's go back to what we were reading in Jeremiah 6, verse 6 through 9. For Jehovah says this, cut down her trees and raise a siege ramp against Jerusalem. This is a city to be punished. In her there is nothing but oppression. Just as a cistern keeps its water fresh, 
so she keeps her wickedness fresh. Violence and destruction are heard within her, always before me sickness and wounds. Accept correction, Yerushalayim, or I will be estranged from you and turn you into a desolate waste, waste, a land without inhabitants. Thus says Jehovah Sivo, they will glean the remnant of Israel as thoroughly as in a vineyard. One last time, like a great picker, passes your hand over the, the vines. So now that you have a good understanding of the, the trees, you can see that the, the people are sinning all the time. The people have wounds, they're sick. And God is saying to these pagans that are, are coming to destroy the city, cut down the trees. Cut them all down and destroy my people because they keep their sin fresh. Okay, so they keep their fred, uh, sin fresh. And then we're going to now focus on verse number 8 in Jeremiah 6, verse 8, uh, about this, except correction, Yerushalayim. Or I will be estranged from you and turn you into a desolate waste, a land without inhabitants. That occurred, and let's uh, look closer at that. Let's look at the, as I said in the beginning of, the, of this study tonight, uh, we're, we're, this word estranged is, is important to fully understand its Hebrew meanings. Estranged, in some of your translations, it says alienated. It's H3363. Yaka. Number one, to be dislocated. Be alienated. Okay, so if your arm is dislocated, you're not going to be able to use it. If you're alienated, you're not going to be part of the group. You're not going to be part of those that are blessed. You're, you're, you're going to be out on your own. Some people might like that, but that's not good for going to war, being alone. Number Definition number two. To execute slowly. Okay. And then it has in parentheses by exposure or being impaled. So when Jehovah says, I'll be estranged from you, it's like I'm going to kill you slowly. I'm going to impale you. So uh, there's a, a torture method that the, the Chinese used. In China, uh, there are certain areas that uh, bamboo grows grows. And bamboo grows, I believe, uh, I'm going from memory here, uh, a quarter of an inch an hour. It's a very, and it's very strong. So the, the way that they would impale their enemies is they would strip off their clothes and put a piece of bamboo that would impale them. And the bamboo is, and the people would be unable to move so the bamboo would be going, and they would make it so it comes to a point. Okay, so Jehovah is saying to us in, uh, in verse number 8, Accept correction, Jerusalem, or I will be estranged from you and turn you into a desolate waste, a land without inhabitants. Okay, I'm going to impale you and I'm going to do it slowly because you are not listening. Definition number three is to hang. Uh, now, sometimes when you get hung, uh, when when you drop, your neck breaks, so uh, you can't really feel much of the pain, but you understand the, the, the suffocation. Uh, but hanging, uh, for most people, it's, it's a terrifying couple of minutes because you can't... Uh, do anything and then your windpipe is being cut off so you're not going to be able to breathe and suffocation to death is the last couple of minutes of your life is very scary so the lord is saying i'm, I'm gonna hang you and turn you into a desolate wasteland because you i gave you the chance to leave i gave you the chance to turn but you don't want to do it definition number four to be executed so this is pretty powerful, verse number eight. 
It's very powerful. Then we move on to verse number nine. Uh, we're going to get through most of the chapter tonight. I'm going to try to do in each of our studies, try to get through a whole chapter if possible. Okay. Uh, as to move the study along a little bit. I mean, I, from the, the amount of people who are coming to our website, people are liking the very detailed studies. But I want to move this one over. There's a lot of very good stuff to learn so that we don't make the same mistakes. But I'm going to try to move it along a little quicker. Verse number 9, Thus says Jehovah Sibot, They will glean the remnant of Israel as thoroughly as, a, as in a vineyard. One last time, like a great picker, passes your hand over the vines. Each grape is very important to people that are making wine. And they're going to strip off the every grape possible. So, Jehovah is saying, you know, and put this together, that except they, he's telling them to accept correction, but they won't. So now he's saying, I'm going to go through this land like a, a grape picker passing the sand over the vines. And it's, that's something that is very important for us to, to look at. That when he's gleaming, uh, gleaning the last grapes off, that means nobody's going to be left. Okay, so pray that it doesn't happen in winter. Uh, if you're ready to meet the Lord, pray that you perish. Okay, if you're not ready to meet the Lord because eternity is going to be a long time in hell, uh, pray that this doesn't happen to you. So repent and return. Okay, so the, the tribes are carried away captive. The, the Chaldeans come and carry uh, the people away uh, because they didn't want to listen. And they carried everyone away. Okay, they carried most everybody away. Now we look to verse uh, section number four, verse 10 through 15. This is a, a long section. To whom should I speak? Whom should I warn? Who will listen to me? Their ears are dull. They can't pay attention. For them the word of Jehovah has become unattractive, an object of scorn. This is why I'm full of Jehovah's fury. I'm wary of holding it back. Pour it out on the children in the streets and on the groups of young men gathered. For husbands and wives will be taken together, seniors as well as the very old. Their homes will be turned over to others, their fields together with their wives, Yes, I will stretch out, out my hand against those who are living in the land, says Jehovah. For from the least to the greatest of them, all are greedy for gains. Prophets and Kohanim alike, they all practice fraud. They dress the wound of my people, but only superficially saying, there is perfect shalom when there is no shalom. They should be ashamed of their detestable deeds, but they are not ashamed at all. They don't know how to blush. Therefore, when others fall, they too will fall. When I punish them, they will stumble, says Jehovah. Okay, so now, after taking the time that we've done here tonight in this study of Yirmiyahu, Jeremiah chapter 6, the part number 21, you really can fully comprehend now what verse number 14 is saying. You know, they're, they're, when they say peace, peace, but there is no peace. You can fully get what the Lord is saying here. Because, you know, in verse number 10, the word of God, the word of Jehovah is unattractive. You know, 
That's the way even the body of Messiah is. They don't like to read. Their pastors, you know, they need shows. They need to. It's good to have a good worship team, you know. But are people paying attention to the word? Is it a thirty-minute message, and you know they can't go over thirty minutes? You know, if if they do, do people leave because I can't sit here and listen to this? I got things to do. So we need to look at uh, unattractive. Okay, in verse number ten, the word has become unattractive. Okay, so verse number ten, unattractive. Uh, It's H uh, two seven eight one. Chirpa means number one taunt, taunt, or scorn. Okay, so w most people scorn the word of God. They, I don't want to hear that stuff about you know you can't have an alternate lifestyle. You have to look a certain way. You have to let your beard grow. You have to eat certain foods. You know they don't want to hear that. It's 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 uh, abhorrent to them. Okay, number two, reproach, condition of shame. So, what he's saying in verse ten is, the word is, okay, the word is so unattra unattractive. It's like it's a condition of shame that that you you would read it. It's so horrible. Okay. So now let's go to verse 14. It's one, of, it's one of our key verses here. They dress the wound of my people, but only superficially, saying there's perfect wisdom, uh, there's perfect shalom, when there is no shalom. Verse 15, they should be ashamed of their detestable deeds, but they are not ashamed at all. They don't know how to, to blush. Therefore, when others fall, they too will fall. When I punish them, they will stumble says Jehovah. All right, so let's look at that a little bit closer. Verse 14 is one of our key verses, okay? So people are saying they want peace, but there is no peace, okay? Why is there no peace? Because we haven't fixed the problem. The problem is, is that we don't want to pay attention to it. The word of God. He said in Torah that if we do what the Torah says, people will want to talk to us. They will want to ask us why. Why are we so blessed? You know, and they'll want to follow the word of God because they'll see that He's blessing us beyond, you know, them beyond anything imaginable. But you know, we're looking for peace with. With the pagans, but we're not looking for for with the peace with God, with Jehovah. So they say peace, peace, but there is no peace. There is no shalom because we don't fix the reason that we're injured. All right? You know, we have false prophets saying that you're going to be raptured out of here. That's not going to happen. You, know, you might be raptured when you're dead. Okay. Next thing you know is you're going to be up in heaven at your trial. Okay. So the physicians, the Kohanim, they're all lying. Okay. And uh, now, you know, people are saying we want peace. You know, it wasn't, you know, right before October 7th. You know, the day before, the two days before, Saudi Arabia was seeking peace with Israel. That's not going to happen now. Not until Messiah comes back. Okay. Uh, so now we understand what is being said in verse 14. It's really, you needed to study the chapter to fully comprehend the peace, peace, but there is no peace. Okay, so hold your place there in Jeremiah 6 and turn in on our Brit Hadashah bridge to 2 Peter. 2 Kepha, chapter 2, verse 17 through 19. 
2 Peter 2, verse 17 through 19. Waterless springs they are, mist driven by a gust of wind, for them has been reserved the blackest darkness. Mouthing grandioses and nothingness, they play on the desires of the old nature in order to seduce with debaucheries people have just begun to escape from those whose way of life is wrong they promise them freedom but they themselves are slaves of corruption for a person is a slave to whatever has defeated him okay so they're saying peace peace but there is no peace okay so the, those people are waterless springs they seduce people to come and do what the old nature is. So Kef is you know, saying, don't make peace with those people that are dragging you back into their, the old life. And this also ties together, what Kef is writing here, ties together with Jeremiah 6, verse 14, but it also ties together with verse 7 in Jeremiah, where it talked about the cisterns, that wickedness. So so Kepha, Peter, is saying they seduce you back to the debaucheries. Peace, peace, but there is no peace. The, the wickedness of that cistern. Okay, so now let's go back to Jeremiah. Verse 16 and 17. This is one on our, th our third key verse. Now this can fully, now that we've studied this chapter real well, you can fully comprehend what this means now. Jeremiah 6, verse 16 and 17. Here's what Jehovah says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask about the ancient paths. Which one is the good way? Take it and you will find rest for your souls. But they said we will not take it. I have appointed sentinels to direct them. Listen for the sound of the shofar. But they said we will not listen. Okay, so the, the, the word crossroads. In some of your translations, it's the word way, which is H1870. The word is Derek. It means one, the way, the road, the distance, the journey, the manner. Number two, the direction. Number three, the manner, the habit. The way. Four. Of course of life figuratively. Five of moral character. Okay. So look at the, the course of your life. Okay. That's the crossroads. Look at the, your, your course of life. Number five. Your moral character. That's the crossroads. So you're always saying... The, the crossroads. So also, and we have, it says, look at the ancient paths. Ancient is H5769, Hola, long duration, antiquity, forever, everlasting, evermore, perpetual, old, ancient. Number two, continuous existence, perpetual. Everlasting, number three, indefinite, unending, eternity. Okay, so now that ancient path is from eternity. That ancient path has been continually in existence. It's your crossroads. It's your moral character. What is your moral character? What is your course of life? And then he says, if you, you'll look at it and you'll find rest for your soul. That's H4771. Mogoa. Rest. It's not the word shalom. It's the word rest. Okay, as in from your problems. So look at the, your moral character. Look at your way of life. Look at the ancient paths from, from eternity and take it. And they say, no, we're not going to take it. He said, listen to the sound of the shofar. No, we're not going to listen to that either. It's amazing how people are. 
In uh, verse 17, I appointed sentinels to direct them. Listen for the sound of the shofar. And they said, we will not listen. Okay, so the sentinels are the watchmen. The watchmen warn, as we see from the other prophet Ezekiel in chapter 3 and in chapter 33. Uh, the sentinels, the watchmen, uh, when they warn you, your blood is no longer on their hands. So the Lord is saying, I've sent watchmen. I fulfilled my Torah mandate. I've warned you. And now you don't want to listen to the watchman. You know, the watchman says to the wicked personally, turn, wicked person, turn. But they don't want to turn. So you're going to die in your wickedness. And, you know, Jeremiah and Ezekiel 3, 18 and 19. You know, the, the watchman, the, the sentinel warns, but the people don't want to listen. Okay, so you don't want to listen. You don't want to listen. So you're going to have to pay the price. But he sent the watchman. He sounded the shofar. Now your blood is on your own head. And finally, our last part for the, this study tonight. We're going to look at verse 18 through 21, section number 6. The consequences of their own way. So here, you nations, know you assembly, what there is against them. Here, O earth, I'm going to bring disaster on this people. It is the consequences of their own way of thinking. Consequences of their own way of thinking. For they pay no attention to my words. And as for my Torah, they reject it. What do I care about Incense from Shiva or sweet cane from a distant land. Your burnt offerings are unacceptable. Your sacrifices don't please me. Therefore, thus says Jehovah, I will put obstacles in the way of this people. They will stumble over fathers and sons, neighbors and friends. All will perish together. Consequences, okay. In some of your translations, it's fruit. It's eight six five two nine, Paris, fruit number one, number two fruit, offspring, children, progeny of the womb, number three fruit of actions. Okay, so now your actions show Elohim what you're doing. So verse number nineteen, the consequences of their own way of thinking. He sent people to warn you. He sounded the shofar. He told you to get out of the city. He was sending armies to come. But you didn't want to listen. You didn't want to pay attention. So this is the consequences of your own way of thinking. It's because you don't want to turn. That's why Beth Goyim is here. As long as I can do my job for the Lord, I will. Because... He's given me this job as a watchman to teach every and all people that we have consequences of our actions. So we need to turn from our wicked ways because things are coming. But it's very, you know, look at verse uh, 19. Here, O earth, I'm going to bring disaster on this people. It is a consequence of their own way of thinking. For they pay, it, they pay no attention to my words. As for my Torah, they reject it. That is so true today that we are rejecting the word of the Lord. So we will close in prayer. And this will be up on our website, bethcoin.org or bgmctv.org. If you like it or hate it, send me an email. If you want the slides, send me an email. The slides are over 350 now for this study so far. If they are free. Yeah, please hit the donate button. So let's close in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings today. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to share this truth. May many people hear the word of the Lord and turn and repent. Your name is Yeshua. Everybody said Amen. Shalom, everybody. Shalom. This is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. 
I would personally like to thank you for tuning in to The Remnant's Call each and every week. You can listen to the full message on our website, bethgoyim.org. If you have drawn closer to the King of Kings, learned more about Him today, we are blessed. If you are blessed by these messages, please consider a donation to our ministry. You can go to our website, bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M dot org. And click on the donate button. You do not have to have a PayPal account to donate. All you need is a debit card. Once again, thank you very much for listening to The Remnant's Call. If you have not taken your first steps to be born again, just ask God's help. Remember, it's His loving grace that has come to find you. No one is worthy or able to reach God, but God can reach us, and He's reaching out to you now. Just open your heart and let Him in. His arms are open, and the blessing of salvation and eternal life are waiting for you. Don't let it wait any longer. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his shalom. Shalom. My name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman, and I invite you to come to visit our congregation. If you are in the tri-state area, come out and visit with us on Shabbat. We are a congregation of Jews and Gentiles, living as one in the Messiah Yeshua. BGMC is a place of true worship. The focus never wanders from the Hebraic roots of our faith. Beth Goyim is rooted in the Word of God from Bereshit through to the book of Revelation. Messiah's strong words against man-made tradition are carefully recorded in Matthew 7. That is the reason we only follow the straight-up instructions found in Scripture. Truly, the way, the truth, and the life. If you're looking for a deeper walk with Adonai, come out for our Tuesday evening Bible study called Messianic Torah Time. Come, spend the day with us on any Shabbat. We start at 11 a.m. with the sound of the ancient Hebrew shofar. Next, we offer our King praise and worship in English, Hebrew, and Spanish. After worship, we review the headlines in the previous week's news from around the globe, especially news from the Holy Land, Israel. We don't just list the news headlines as current events, but we comb through the scriptures searching for clues to understand what they mean and then to help pinpoint prophetically our current position on Adonai's clock. After digesting all that modern information, we leave the world behind as we journey with our Adonai deep into his eternal word, not with just one or two scriptures, but usually seven or more scriptures. The spiritual nourishment and the richness of his kingdom become accessible to the ones who share this special time and seek them out. The day does not end there. Because Shabbat is so special to him, there is always so much more that our king desires to share. So instead of separating and leaving, we stay together as a family for potluck lunch and an afternoon study of our king's word. We close this Shabbat together with a reading of the New Week's parasha. That's the Torah portion. Even after those blessings, many of us just can't get enough. So the members bring prepared homemade foods to share while we all enjoy an uplifting movie together. If all that information is not quite enough, you can check out our website where you will find over 200 video teachings and Biblical Holy Day studies. Under Messianic Torah Time, the Hebrew Roots button, you'll discover free studies on many, many different topics, including PowerPoint slide presentations. 
If Beth Goyim sounds like a place you'd love to visit, but you live outside the tri-state area, there is still a way to connect with us. We stream live on the internet on Tuesday, Thursday, and Shabbat. The website is www.bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. Our phone number is 973-338-7800 or 978-2-YESHUA. That's 978, the number 2, YESHUA. Shalom.